Lou Pearlman was known for shaping the popular boy bands of the 90s like the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, but also for his illegitimate business practices. His life would end behind bars in a Texas prison in 2016, but prior to that, Lou called a massive mansion in Windermere, Florida, dubbed Chateau Lou home, funded by his fraudulent activities. This sprawling estate would be claimed by the bank, but before that, many of his boy band protégés would also stay there thanks to its 12,000 square feet of space, multiple bedrooms and amenities like a swimming pool, movie theater, and much, much more. Lou Pearlman was a well-known American record producer and a manager who shaped the 1990s pop music landscape by creating and managing some of the most successful boy bands of the era, including Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. Lou's journey into the music industry was random to say the least. He started off in the aviation business, launching an airship company called Airship International. But it was his pivot to music management that brought him fame and fortune. Lou's fascination with the success of New Kids on the Block inspired him to form his own boy band. In 1993, he founded Transcontinental Records and assembled the Backstreet Boys, who became a global sensation. And riding on that success, he replicated the formula with NSYNC, another major success. Well, despite his wins in the music industry, Lou's business practices were far from legit. In the mid 2000s, it was exposed that he had been running one of the largest and longest running Ponzi schemes in history, defrauding investors of over $300 million. He lured investors with promises of high returns through his transcontinental airlines and other businesses, which were largely fake. In 2006, authorities began investigating Perlman's financial activities, uncovering his fraudulent schemes. By 2007, he was apprehended in Indonesia and extradited to the United States. A year later, Perlman was convicted of conspiracy, money laundering, and making false statements during a bankruptcy proceeding. Lou was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Before his downfall and before living in a prison cell, Perlman enjoyed a lavish lifestyle funded by his illegal activities. He owned multiple luxury properties, including a sprawling mansion in Windermere, Florida. The mansion known as Chateau Lou featured numerous bedrooms, a home theater, a swimming pool, and expansive grounds. In addition to his Florida estate, Lou owned several other properties and he loved high-end cars and of course, private jets. This mansion located in Windermere, Florida was Papa Lou's pride and joy. It was two properties combined together, one with a guest apartment and four car garage. In the end, the bank got their hands on this mega home and they were eager to sell, reportedly offloading it for $7.1 million after being listed at $8.5 million. Either way, it was a steal for a home spanning 12,000 square feet of space. This outrageous mansion was where Lou once relaxed away from the spotlight with his boy band members. The two-story mega home boasts a boat dock on the lake and amenities like a pool and hot tub, sauna, steam room, media room, and extra lot. The home was completely gated and built in an impressive Italian Renaissance style. Situated on a very large lakefront site directly on Lake Butler, the property is a rare find. So more recent photos of this mansion show a newer design style and that interiors have been updated and made more modern. These days, there's more of a white and black color scheme throughout as well as some monochrome details. Walking into Lou's one-time home, there are jaw-dropping twin staircases leading to the upstairs underneath soaring 30-foot ceilings. The main house is connected by a covered lodge leading to a guest apartment and a large media room. The second lot includes a separate building with a four-car garage and a large guest or staff apartment. The estate boasts a lot of marble floors throughout, high ceilings, and many versatile rooms that can be defined according to one's needs. In Lou's case, he had plenty of room for his boy band members to live their best rent-free life. Before selling, all major repairs like the plumbing, electrical, and mechanical work were taken care of. Only cosmetic work remained, making it a great opportunity for whoever the new owner was to make everything new and personalized. 
Located in a gated community, Lou's former home offered the best privacy and security. The large lot had ample room to expand the grand estate even further. Now, most of Lou's furnishings in his mansion were auctioned off in a bankruptcy sale, raising approximately 280K. The highest bid was just over 10K for Lou's golf cart, which he designed to look like a Cadillac Escalade. His Baldwin baby grand player piano sold for just under 4K. Lou had a ton of memorabilia too, from the Backstreet Boys and Sync and his other boy bands. He even had Star Wars and other entertainment and sports collectibles. A statue of Anakin Skywalker from the Star Wars movies sold for $1,100. As you likely know, Lou Perlman's life ended behind bars. He left this world on August 19th, 2016 at the Federal Correctional Institution in Texarkana, Texas due to cardiac arrest. His death would mark the end of his wild journey from a successful music mogul living in the lap of luxury to a convicted fraudster. Lou's legacy is a complex one. On one hand, he did play a huge role in shaping the careers of some of the biggest names in pop music. We probably wouldn't have Backstreet Boys and NSYNC if it weren't for him. But on the other hand, his criminal activities left a trail of financial devastation and made him into the bad guy. The story of Lou Pearlman serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of greed, showing how the pursuit of success can lead to a huge downfall when boundaries are crossed. After looking at the late Lou Pearlman's infamous Florida mansion, that'll wrap up today's house tour. Thanks for watching. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat, and I'll see you in another one. Bye!